Back on the scene again, QBS 97.5 FM broadcasting to you live from Doha, Qatar, all over the airwaves. Uh, big shout out to my guest in the house today. Loving the shirt. <laughs> Thank you. you know? um, honestly, I'm really glad to have you here in the studio. I feel like you have a, a really great role um, in the mascot scene. And uh, I feel like the public should definitely get to know you more today. Thank you for having me. Really, really. And um, did that kick off in a serious way? Did you feel like it was serious? Sorry? Did, you, did we kick it off in a serious way? You know? uh, did it give like deep vibes? You know, we're gonna. We're but gonna it sounds like radio. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it sounds like it sounds official. Yeah, I felt like we we're gonna discuss something environmental. <laughs> but let me give a little brief to our guest uh, about our guest tonight. You know, just so you can know more about him. So, Father Kawari is an award-winning writer and art director. He began his career in an art department, working on projects such as uh, Miranar. The Reluctant Fundamentalist, as well as several short films uh, with Innovation Films and the, the Doha Film Institute. Fad also is the joint uh, recipient of uh, Merit Award from uh, the CEDA Awards for Excellence for Developing a Production Design Curriculum for the Virginia Commonwealth University in Qatar, where uh, he guest lectured from 2016 until 2019. He holds a bachelor degree in fine arts from Virginia Commonwealth University and a master's degree in film and screen studies uh, from Goldsmith College University of London. And he currently works as a senior content developer at Katara Studios. And you are the official uh, content uh, writer for Laib, the mascot for FIFA World Cup 2022 Qatar. I'm, I'm happy uh, to get a chance to have a conversation with you because um, I want to know the story. I want to know how it happened. I want to know the stress and the anxiety you've been through. I feel like you've been through a lot in the past year because as the date comes closer and closer, there's so much going to be revealed to the public. So let's start off with the journey. How did the idea come about? Um, as, as we had a conversation before, this, you had the sketches sent over and you had to work on the mythology. So curious... Uh, Carry us throughout the story a little bit. Um, so, uh, me and my colleague um, at Qatar Studies, Mohammed Ibrahim, we are both uh, working um, as uh, content developers yeah. at Qatar Studios, and uh, we were commissioned to, you know, create the world of Laib to create Laib as a character. And yeah. to be honest, we didn't have much to work with when we first started. Yeah. Um, we received the sketches of what Laib. Uh, looks like and they were pre preliminary sketches they look nothing like the label that we have today really? yeah um, are you allowed to display those at some point um well i i can't answer for that yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh the, the the process of of developing this this character was kind of tricky because laib is not a traditional mascot he's kind yeah. of amorphous he's in a way he, he shape shifts he changes and he doesn't really walk. He doesn't have legs. He's not yeah. anthropomorphic. He doesn't look like a humanized creature. He's his own thing. Yeah. So how do you approach creating? Um, you, how how do you approach characterization for yeah. such a for such a figure? Mm -hmm. um, and the the process started with just you know brainstorming random wild ideas. And both me and my colleague Mohammed Mohammed is like a football fanatic, yeah. and I'm not. Like I'm always. Did that help? Did you get someone who's a football fanatic? <clears throat> Uh, it, it it made the whole thing a learning process for yeah. me. Like I learned so much from from my colleague, and I learned so much researching about you know the history of the World Cup. Because I always say when it comes to football, I'm an atheist. You know what okay. I mean? Like I'm I I I know nothing about it. I barely even watch football. Yeah. Like all I know is that it's you know eleven guys running across a field trying <laughs> to shoot a ball in a, in a goal, and that's yeah. it. But um, for me, that was kind of part of of of. The direction that I wanted to take with Laib. Also. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not someone who's super into football. Yeah. How can I make this character relevant to me as an outsider of this world? You know, and uh, part of the thinking process was, you know, football fanatics, uh, fans of the tournament, people who are here for the football are going to sit here, watch the football and engage with Laib either ways. Yeah. How can we create a character that attracts people like me, mm -hmm. people that are not necessarily interested in this world? How can we lure them in? Um, and so I, I started developing content with my with my colleague, Mohammed, and with his football on, insight and my complete alienation to this world, we kind of decided to shape this character into... Um, almost like an ambassador of, of mascotverse, yeah. which is where the idea of mascotverse 
sort of uh, um, emerged. Uh, what if Laib is, you know, what if we create something that, you know, has to do with meta reality universes? What if it's self aware? What if Laib directly addresses us? What if he's mm. not super serious? What if he's kind of like, you know, like think genie from Aladdin, think Deadpool, think these characters. What if he becomes like a pop culture icon rather mm. than, you know, something that exists Temporary. only? Yeah, yeah. Mm. We wanted to take him beyond marketing material. Yeah. We wanted him to be a living, breathing character that engages with audiences in a way that is sort of unprecedented. However, the challenge was that this is not how you know FIFA operates. Yeah. Uh, FIFA mascots don't necessarily speak. They don't yeah, necessarily. Yeah, that, by the way, that's 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 a big step. How did you feel when you realized that you are able to give a mascot for the first time in history a dialogue? It was surreal. Like to me, it the entire journey creating this feels surreal. It feels yeah. like a dream. Like here I am, someone who didn't necessarily engage with football all my life yeah. um, and now I'm here in this position being offered this amazing opportunity yeah. to do something that is part of the legacy not just of football but for yeah, my for country ever. you know yeah part, something that, that can exist forever you know for my country and it's 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 surreal it's magical yeah. so when we first developed some ideas we sent some um, drafts, some treatments, uh, initial presentations of the direction that we want to go through. The feedback we received was like, yeah, we like this. You know what? We're going to have Laib be the first speaking mascot ever. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I couldn't believe it, yeah. you know, because I'm, I'm writing this thing and it's full of humor and it has self-aware jokes. Yeah. And I'm like, there's no way this is going to fly out. We're, we're going to get so many notes and start downsizing. And that's yeah. how the process goes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, it was approved. And I'm like, what? What gave you the idea to actually give it a dialogue? You know, like what triggered that in you? And you realize, hey, let me just give it a dialogue and see what they're going to say. See, like, I, I, I'm a storyteller. Yeah. You know, I, I don't come from a marketing uh, background. Okay. I, I come from an art and design background. I'm, I engage in stories and experiences. Yeah. And I wanted to give it a shot um, to try and, you know, create a world. So yeah. um, the, the process of, of creating this, this mascot, uh, yeah. the, the spirit, the soul for the mascot, yeah. was um, a world building exercise okay. for me. So it was about... Uh, how can we tell a story that is engaging to the audiences? How can we create a world that is sort of lush and attractive and um, inspiring? And how can we embed all of these values that, you know, our, our client, uh, Qatar 2022, uh, FIFA, how can, we, how can we get all of these values, all of these ideas in a way that is engaging? And for me, I'm a storyteller. So I went with script writing and I started writing dialogue and I treated it like a short film rather than a commercial. You know, sometimes I feel like life puts people in the right places, you know, whether you, <laughs> whether you believe in that or not or whoever it uh, does. It, sometimes it does because to look at your educational background, to look at your personal interests as a person who is also into storytelling, into mythology in a way, to, to be given a character that has no identity, has no existence whatsoever, and for you to nourish it with life and to give it so many characters out of nothing, it takes a lot of creative drive. It takes a lot of focus. It takes a lot of sitting down with yourself and realizing how can I give a global character um, that could be understood by the public because you're getting like what three four to four million visitors and you want them to resonate somehow yes it's it's a cultural thing of I course. agree but but <laughs> me I'm coming let's say from you know the UK or I'm coming from the states or I'm coming I want to resonate with this character anyway and I want to re understand it how was that realistic to you how were you able to do that I always believe that uh, when you write something, when you create something, you need to sort of like it first. Yeah. And if you don't like it, there's no way that you create something honest enough for people to like. Scratch it out. Yes. Yeah. So, so I kind of like wrote this for myself first. Mm -hmm. So I, I approached it as something that I need to feel, you know, I need to feel good about it. It needs to make me laugh. It needs to make me, uh, you know, engaged in a certain way. And I yeah. believe... It, it, any any artistic endeavor needs to sort of be approached that way. That's how I, that's what I believe, at least. Yeah. If if you approach something with so much love and so much passion and so much 
positivity, I then mean, it, it will manifest yeah. um, in that way. So I wrote it in a way that I would like. It's something that engages me, and I believe if it engaged me, it will definitely speak to someone. Yeah. Um, and again, with the guidance of my colleagues, um, we had that collective um, of, of minds from different backgrounds. We were able to shape this character into something that can be relatable to the people from different backgrounds. So yeah. we, it, Al has a little bit of me in him. It has a little bit of Muhammad, my colleague, in him. It has a lot, a, a bit of, like everyone who was involved gave a part of their soul yeah. to Laib and Laib now and, is this and collective. As, I think also it, it plays a role you as a person that grew up on this land, on this soil, a person that comes from Qatar and also who grew up here and who witnessed, you know, what's what it's like to anticipate 10 years of waiting for the World Cup. I feel like it's not just also your persona, but also a collective persona of people. Who, who have been really waiting for this mega event. Yeah, right? yeah, of course. I mean, you, you could summarize mythology as being, you know, a, a dreamlike manifestation of the sure. collective consciousness. You sure. know what I mean? Sure. So in, in that way, yeah, like the World Cup is a manifestation of, of the dreams of the people over the past 10 years or even more. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a mental exercise for yeah. everyone to yeah. be able to to make this vision a reality yeah. and it, it's it's tiring and it's exhausting and it's made out of like blood sweat and tears but yeah. at the end of the day you create something that you're so proud of you know what i mean yeah. and it lives as part of the legacy forever so speaking of laib um how did the idea come about where where you wanted to take it through historical goals <laughs> it, it goes into such mega events in the past what, how did that come in mind and how was it executed? So uh, part of the mythology of Laib is that he's a character that is able to open portals and traverse universes and, you know, he, he can fold time and space and travel back and forth in time mm -hmm. through dimensions. And one way we thought uh, we could engage football fans is to highlight some of their favorite moments. Yeah. Um, so we had uh, Laib travel back in the past and we sort of uh, part of the part of what makes Laib uh, fitting to be the mascot is that he experienced so much. Okay, you know what I mean. Yeah. So he was able to witness all previous World Cups, and although it wasn't his time to manifest on Earth, he still did it anyways, which sometimes got him into trouble. <laughs> but that's what Laib is like. You know, yeah. he's he's playful. He doesn't necessarily follow all the rules, um, and that's what makes him special. Is that he's in a way, like us, he's not uh, hes not perfect. He um, is playful. He's a bit mischievous. Um, he has that uh, playful persona. So we wanted to, when we first came up with this idea of, of, of the metaverse and the traveling back in time and the incorporation of, of previous mascots and all of that stuff, um, we wanted to see Laib in moments like, you know, the moon landing. We wanted to see Laib in, in historic moments. Yeah. Uh, but then my colleague, Mohammed, the football fan, he's like, it would be great if Laib is there during previous football matches. Oh, wow. What if he attends, you know, previous World Cups? What if he was there? What if he somehow assisted, wink, wink, okay. you know, yeah. players yeah. To, to, to achieve goals, to lift trophies, to celebrate, to do their dances? What if he was there all along? It's just that we didn't notice him. And you know what? Yeah. Maybe we did notice him and maybe he was uh, removed in post. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's it's part of his it's part of his, you know, mischievous, playful, yeah. uh, childlike persona. So you also focus on creating a, a mascot verse in a way. Mm -hmm. Was that also a part of the journey or Yes. So when 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 it came about that Laib kind of um, came to earth multiple times before yeah. and sort of assisted uh people and their creative endeavors well he's not the first mascot to do that mascots sure. have been coming from mascot verse yeah. across you know millennia from the beginning of time but we misinterpreted their visits yeah. we call them aliens we call them <laughs> monsters we call them you know bigfoot and the Loch Ness monster and whatnot yeah. these are you know creatures that were trying to reach out to us and communicate to us and sort of inspire us and it goes both ways for mascot verse as well so the ideas of, of humanity kind of feed or manifest themselves in mascot verse. 
and wife, vice versa. So mascots kind of inspire us, but we do inspire them as well. Yeah. So the existence of their universe de depends on human creativity, which is why they keep visiting us to inspire us to be more creative. You know, something that I love about, about this conversation right now is that you look into nothing and really create a character that comes to life and also, um, not just it comes to life, but you also enjoy it. You know, me as a person, when I didn't know much about the background story, and I'm going to be honest with you. So when, when I saw that, for a minute, I felt like there's a lot of story behind it that I don't get it, mm. you know. But now sitting down with you, I feel like I understand the character very well. And I feel like it has a really great message or also a character uh, that you do enjoy. Yeah, definitely. You know? And th this this will translate through the Laib from Mascot verse. Um, episodic show that is starting to um, air on, on YouTube on the Road to yeah. 2022 channel. Um, the first episode sort of released uh, already and it's about Laib's audition yeah. and how he got the role of the mascot um, to be here in, in, in Qatar. Um, and the next episode will also expand on that mythology and kind of tap into the world of Laib, um, the history of that world, yeah. the history of the World Cup even. Um, and we're going to continue his mischievous adventures on Earth. How did you feel when you got an approval for, you know, hiring a dialogue? And did you feel like now you're going to have to venture into a more challenge where you're going to have to create a speaking mascot or a dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> and this is something that hasn't really happened before. And you're like, oh, God, now I have to, like, really work on it. So it's it's absolutely surreal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, out of out of everything, out of... There are millions of people who would kill for this opportunity. You know course, what I mean? Yeah, no, and the fact that, that I'm here and I can say that I'm a part of this is just insane. It's absolutely insane. You walked in history. Like, <laughs> you're just saying it's real. Yeah. Like, I'm, yeah. I, I get to go to Mascotverse. You know yeah. what I mean? With Laib. And it's absolutely insane. Um, and so uh, we take this opportunity very seriously and we yeah. try as much as we can to create content that is you know representative of the host country representative yeah. of us as creatives and in a way also representative of the tournament itself yeah. um so this this challenge of creating a speaking mascot comes with a lot of in a way stress and anxiety because oh, yeah. you know ask you about that yeah i, really I mean do. there are a lot of boxes that we need to tick when it comes to you know marketing yeah. when it comes to messaging when it comes to that stuff and that in a way sometimes interferes with creativity so it's it's a it's, it's an exercise of of self-discipline in a way yeah. where you can you know you, you have to in a way uh, guide your own creativity in a certain direction and force yourself to work the because at the end of the day you work with a client you know what i mean and it's not just a client it's one of the biggest clients in the world you know what i mean so it, it is a challenge it is a it is a challenge but i'm extremely i I can't deny that I feel extremely privileged to be put in this situation. How did you feel emotionally uh, when you got put into the task, when you realized that this is really a big task and and I have to create? Now, the creating part, put that on the side. But you as, as, as Fahad, how did you really feel? How did you deal with the anxiety, the stress, the time frame? Uh, what was your day-to-day -day life when you were actually creating this persona? How did you feel, you know? So it, it, it's, it's a lot of trial and error. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and it's a lot of time, you know, sitting at home, thinking with yourself, yeah. creating something, sending it for feedback, getting it rejected, getting notes and rewriting. And it's a constant process of writing and rewriting. Yeah. And even now, even, even now that we're at the late stages um, of, of this creative process, we're still, you know, in that loop of writing and rewriting. And yeah. that gets really stressful. Uh, but because of the nature of the creative work, every obstacle kind of sets a new creative challenge. Mm. So it becomes an exercise of trying to find creative ways to navigate these obstacles mm. and navigate these these guidelines. How can you how can you still express yourself creatively yeah. when you're working with a you know you're working with a client that has needs and has messaging and it's a big marketing exercise. Yeah. So it's 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 again it's a a challenge of of in a way, self-discipline to try and, you know, contain yeah. yourself and creatively try to navigate all these obstacles and create something that you're proud of and, you know, the client is happy with at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Um, 
and also from from another perspective when it comes to the uh, Eve itself um, how was the feedbacks back from friends from family did that uh, somehow give you a more motivation a more push how, how was it like the first showcase so to be honest in the beginning I was like this is I, I didn't want anyone to see it to, see it, to know <laughs> that I'm involved because it's so much pressure you know it's yeah. such a global thing yeah. and I've never been a part of something of this scale before yeah. so there's a lot of pressure and anxiety and you know I don't want people to see it I don't want people to talk about it and mm. when my friends first saw it I was like you know what watch it and don't give me feedback yeah. I don't I don't want to hear notes just watch it silently yeah. but then I I saw that the feedback is overwhelmingly positive mm -hmm. and that kind of motivated me to go back and you know for the for the future projects that we're doing with Laib like you know Laib from Mascot versus this show uh really put more energy into it just because you know the reception is phenomenal yeah. and now with the merchandise you were i'm seeing images of children wearing you know the laib um, headpiece and you know buying the laib plushies and the toys and some of my friends are calling me and they're like my kid can't stop mimicking laib <laughs> you know my kid can't stop watching this episode and yeah. you know they're like can 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 you tell them you know that you're part of the process can you tell them that you're okay can you tell oh, wow. yeah so i'm getting phone calls from my friends they're like my child wants to talk to you you know what i mean and even when kids come into the studio um for one of the episodes we had children co uh, come on board in the studio okay. and we were filming with them and the minute they realized that you know we're the team behind the they're like oh my god can we get your autographs can we take pictures <laughs> and i'm like wow you know so it feels like it's resonating a lot with with children and yeah. that i find you know extremely phenomenal yeah. they're the most honest critics oh, yes. children you oh, know yeah. what i mean oh, yeah. if they oh, don't yeah. like something they'll be very vocal about it they won't yeah. give compliments and the fact that it resonated with children means so much it to gives you. you a lot of comfort eh? yeah definitely definitely okay. definitely so you know during the journey of uh, creating that eve itself did you ever look into like previous mascots uh, from around the world yeah. Was there a specific mascot in history that somehow resonated with you and it, it played a role or influence for Laib? Um, so, of course, we went back and looked at all previous mascots and we looked at them both in, you know, you know, in terms of characterization, but also yeah. in terms of portrayal. So how did they look like? How did they move? How did they um, engage with, with uh, people on the ground? Um, how were they designed? Um, and we also looked into their you know the history of mascots in general and we did a lot of research looking into mascots even outside of uh, of the world of football so yeah. mascots for, for big international brands and what, what not and how they appear and how they manifest themselves in reality how do they look animated how do they look in 2d versus 3d yeah. all of that stuff um but to me to be honest i found the most inspiration um, outside the realm of football, and I found that in, in science fiction and fantasy. Really? Yeah, I mean, with the whole thing of Laib, you know, mm. being able to travel across universes and to um, travel across worlds and to open portals and, you know, travel in time, um, I found a lot of inspiration in, in, in you know, mythology and sci-fi and fantasy and, and you know i never really expected that because i do know that you were into mythology a lot from our conversation and also storytelling um and it's funny how i never thought that a mascot would be genuinely created from that aspect i thought it would be uh either related to a certain kind of um let's say animal mm -hmm. that is very popular um i personally thought it was going to be an eagle to be, mm -hmm. uh, like a falcon you know what i mean that to be honest with you i was expecting the, yeah we, we we kind of tackled that in episode yeah. one of the show in the audition <laughs> yeah. we have like you know running against mascots that people would assume you know yeah. that but might now, make an appearance so he's running against a falcon an oryx a, yeah. a hoopo um but he ends up winning because of his special abilities because he's prepared so much because he's sort of unique he's not yeah. what you expect him to be yeah. Yeah. i think it would have it would have been very expected if it, it came out as a falcon or as an oryx or yeah it's very different it, it's yeah. it's not a cliche design so I'm, I'm coming from abroad i'm walking into doha in general qatar where also i live in qatar and i want to interact with laib i want to see it i, I want to uh you know have it so how is that possible so laib exists across multiple platforms um laib 
um, visits from Mascotverse, um, yeah. so he should be around. Um, there are the Holotube devices, the Asclave devices, they're now in 10 different locations in Doha, including the Mshirab metro station, um, including uh, uh, Doha Festival City Mall, yeah. um, and multiple other locations. Um, they're pretty much holographic screens in which you can interact with Laib in hologram format and, you know, kind of ask him about things to do in Doha, where to go. He's kind of like your guide um, when it comes to the tournament and life and tourism in Doha as a whole. Um, you can also um, engage with him traditionally on social media. Laib is on Instagram yeah. and Laib is on Twitter as well. Uh, where he's posting a lot of content, so maybe, you know, go talk to him. I'm sure he'll be happy. Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> is, there, is there a creative process that never stops when it comes to a mascot? Like, does it continue till the end of the World Cup, or this is the max for a mascot character? So, w we've been thinking, we've been asking ourselves that question. Yeah. Like, how can we continue the legacy of Laib? Yeah. And there are ideas um, that are in conversation. Um, nothing is set in stone yet, so there's nothing I can reveal um, yeah. as of yet. But there are conversations on, you know, the legacy of Laib yeah. uh, beyond the event, the legacy of the event itself beyond its timeline. So, you know, maintaining that spirit, maintaining that legacy. And you work also on the YouTube series on the channel itself, or yeah. that's a different kind of team? Uh, no, it's, it's we, I'm, I'm, we, me, my colleague Mohammed, yeah. and our producer Mahmoud. Shout out to Mahmoud. Uh, yeah, Salman. So the the te the core team that was involved in the creation of Laib is still the team that you know, generating that content. Yeah. We're still working as a unit. We're still, you know, we're involved in the holotubes, we're involved in the show, we're involved in, you know, the marketing material, the stuff yeah. that goes on social yeah. media. Yeah. You know, we're the Laib unit, pretty oh, much. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's very interesting. Well, you guys heard it. You know, if you if you want to get a chance, um, don't forget about uh, holotubes. You can interact with it. I'm definitely going to try and get a chance to see it. It's very cool. Like, the yeah. tech is Did super futuristic. I went to see it. Yeah. Um, I got uh, to have a lovely conversation with Laib. I asked him about food and tourism. And okay. yes, and, you know, Laib has been very informative on the whole issue. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's somehow a complex process to, to, to also make it very interactive in a way. Was that an idea also from your team perspective? Oh, Laib, uh, there are different ways to engage with Laib. The Holotubes is one, you know, yeah. social media is one, the merchandise. There are also uh, booklets and like, you know, coloring books and that yeah. kind of thing. So there's a lot of uh, interactivity when it comes to Laib. We wanted him to, you know, we wanted to bring him to life. We wanted to carry that mythology outside of, you know, what you will find in traditional marketing. We wanted Laib to be... That's what I realized when you guys told me about the whole tubes, because that's a kind of a new, nice idea that you can find it also, in, especially metro station. It's mm -hmm. going to be really packed. It's going to be crazy during the World Cup. So to see it there and to also be able to interact with the mascot, usual, usually than the traditional method or tactics you know you can just see it in the football stadium and, and that's yeah, it yeah, you know yeah. no and that's that's part of the challenge you know laib um is not uh is not human like it's not mm -hmm. humanoid doesn't walk mm -hmm. so how do you bring that you know floating um amorphous in a way gelatinous figure yeah. to life how does it exist so laib is you know the first digital mascot of that sort. So all yeah. interaction with Laib will happen, you know, digitally through holograms and screens and monitors. And there's more to come. Like there are so many exciting ways that audiences will be uh, interacting with Laib outside of stadiums and in the stadium itself. I can't reveal a lot of information yeah, now, yeah, yeah, but, so. you know, keep an eye on, on Laib's social media, follow Laib. Uh, and you'll see a lot of exciting stuff coming soon. Uh, how do you spell that for them, just in case? Uh, Laib is L-A-E-E-B. You know, one thing that I, I wanted to get to know also is, is you. Yeah. You know, you come from a cinema background. I think you, um, you were in the cinema field for a while. Yep, yep. Did you direct any well-known? So I've, I've been working in film for close to 12 years now. Okay. Um, and... I started in production design and uh, art department work. Yeah. You were also a part of Geekdom, by the way. So I was, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, big I, shout out to that part. You know, whoever went to Geekdom, this man was present. I used to see him from a distance. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I was super involved with Doha Film Institute. To be honest, I owe a lot um, yeah. of, to Doha Film Institute. I learned a lot mm-hmm. uh, during my time there um, when it comes to, you know, film in general, but also when it comes to, you know, event and production yeah. and all that stuff. And I'm not really surprised that you came up with the idea for the mascot, because if we're going to talk about geekdom, your experience with the, the Institute, you're always surrounded by mythology and by stories and by creative people throughout the year, you know, and every year you get a, a version of a gel that just narrates a different kind of idea than the yeah. year before it. Yeah, 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 and you know, working with, with um, children um, and the youth in general, yeah. um, when I was working at Doha Film Institute, was a huge learning experience. It taught me to, you know, widen my horizons and, yeah. you know, engage in things that I wouldn't necessarily you know, find myself engaged in um, the the type of content that I'm consuming, the type of um, stories that I'm engaging with. Yeah. Like I, I I consume a lot of stories, yeah. and, and I think stories are the biggest industry. If you look at the numbers between you know cin- cinema, television, and video games, yeah. stories kind of dominate you know business. Yeah. Um, they lead marketing. They lead uh, e- even what we're doing now. We're sharing stories on radio. Of you course. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah and. A story is an old way of telling things and, and carrying out messages and legacies throughout history. Yeah. Right? A story is an old way of telling things and, and carrying out messages and legacies throughout history. Yeah, right? it's, it's a tool that humans invented yeah. like thousands of years of ago. And it's one of those ancient tools that we still use today. So you have to wonder what utility does it have? What does it offer us for it to withstand the test of time and, you know, continue being the most dominant form of entertainment yeah and they they do something to us that other forms of of you know uh if, if we'll call it uh passive activities uh, stories do something that that is much more active and much more dynamic and in a way they help us you know navigate the world they put us in someone else's shoes yeah and in a way we can engage in a cathartic experience through through that visual medium. You know, I'm a big fan of literature, even though I majored in international relations. Mm-hmm. But a, a part of my experience in education, especially in university, I was always drawn into either biographies or either actual literature. And I spent a very long time reading literature. Mm. But I focused a lot on Middle Eastern literature mm. and, and storytelling. For me, you know, we're talking about Abdurrahman Munif, we're talking mm. about uh, Jabra Ibrahim Jabra and so many of these big you know literature characters and I always was fascinated that this type of storytelling uh, was stuck to a previous generation and you don't see it coming into surface again because the younger or the the, the new generation have a different way of telling a story you know it's not the me- the classical uh, novel kind of structure or even the the, the Arabic itself, the texture is different. Yeah, yeah I mean, we, we come from a long history of oral storytelling, yeah. you know, like sitting with my grandmother, listening to her stories. And it's, it's a tradition that goes back, you know, hundreds of years ago in the region. But when it comes to, you know, the contemporary landscape, one could make the argument that people write creatively today much more than they did in the past. It's just the format is different. Really? People, yeah, I mean, l- look at how many tweets are out there. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? People share their stories, people share their daily lives on social media. On, on They film more than ever. Yeah. Like, you can, you can make the argument that phones sort of democratized um, storytelling. Yeah. So now everyone has a device in which they can write, shoot, edit, and share to the whole world. And that is a powerful tool. So today people are engaged in, you know, storytelling and uh uh, production and film and you know images but in a completely different landscape in a completely different format that yeah. is you know and it will continue evolving beyond the traditional landscape that we're used to so when it comes to also you Fahad, you know what, what's next for you what's your upcoming projects whether in the film scene uh, in the creative scene in general you know after the world cup <laughs> anything you want to share with the public how can people also follow you keep in touch with you see more of your work now in the future, you know? So th- there's a lot that is in development and uh, we kind of put things on hold um, for us to execute the things we're executing now mm-hmm. with the opportunity of the World Cup. So once, you know, the World Cup is over, I think we're going to go back to, you know, the projects that we've been developing for the past years. Yeah. So we have 
um, scripts for feature films. We have scripts for um, TV shows, anthologies. There's a lot of content, even things like YouTube content, podcasts. There are a lot of ideas on paper, and I think um, the next step, they're ready. They're pretty much ready for yeah. pre-production and production. And I think once... Uh, the World Cup um, is over and everyone can relax for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go back to resuming the stuff yeah. that we used to do before. And how can people follow up with you and stay up to date? Well, um, you can find me in Building 11, Katara Studios <laughs> um, at Katara. Um, I encourage anyone, if you're curious about the nature of our work, you know, send us something on social media um, um, at Katara Studios and, you know, pass by anytime, look at what we do. Um, me personally, yeah, you can right. find me on Instagram at Fahoods, F-A-H-O-O-D-S. Okay. If you have any question about storytelling, mythology, cinema, even if you want some film recommendations, for talk sure. to me. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> and how can people follow up with you and stay up to date? Well, um, you can find me in Building 11, Katara Studios <laughs> um, at Katara. Um, I encourage anyone, if you're curious about the nature of our work, you know, send us something on social media um, um, at Katara Studios and, you know, pass by anytime, look at what we do. Um, me personally, yeah, you can right. find me on Instagram at Fahoods, F-A-H-O-O-D-S. Okay. If you have any question about storytelling, mythology, cinema, even if you want some film recommendations, for talk sure. to me. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> Man, it was definitely a pleasure having you in the studio. Yeah, thank you for having me. And this honestly, was really fun. Big shout out to Salman behind the scenes, made it happen. And also That's big shout out to the social media crew here and our QBS staff. Um, hopefully, we'll meet again down the road. You know, yeah, we'll, definitely. and by next year, we'll definitely have a great conversation if something came up from your side. Um, I applaud you on the great work you did with Laib. Uh, thank you I think very it's, much. It's, uh, it's very creative, it's very different, and you know, you left a mark in history. And that's something you should definitely be a proud of. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we're going to have a great World Cup and you'd be proud of it. You know, to see Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah, I look forward. I look sure. forward.